Welcome to Listworthy's explanation of the movie Simone, which is about a has-been movie director who creates a virtual actress to star in his films and his struggles to keep her non-real-life existence a secret. So the movie begins with director Victor Taransky struggling to make his movie after the diva actress Nicola Anders refuses to continue filming and walks away from the project. No bankable stars are willing to work with Victor and to top it all off his ex-wife fires him from her studio. So overall his life sucks big time and he isn't catching any breaks. One night while he is walking around all depressed. A random guy named Hank, who saw him and conversed with him briefly at some movie convention, approaches him and tries to tell him about his virtual actress invention. But Taransky just blows him off, even though Hank says he only has days left to live. Over a week later, Taransky is still looking for a worthwhile actress willing to step into Nicola Anders' shoes and finish the movie, but the feat proves easier said than done. Hank's lawyer visits him and hands him a package Hank left to him in his last will. The package is a hard drive containing a computer program that allows the creation of a computer-generated woman which he can easily animate to play the film's central character and impart the talents of several legendary actresses like Audrey Hepburn and the musical prowess of singers like Whitney Houston. Taransky gives his virtual actress the name Simone which is derived from the computer's program title, Simulation 1. Controlled exactly by Taransky, Simone is seamlessly incorporated into the film and gives a fantastic performance that is an immediate hit with critics and in a pretty short time the movie is a huge success. The studio, the press and indeed the whole world start to ask who is Simone and where is she as no one has met her in person. Taransky speaks to the press and tells them that Simone is a recluse who loves to immerse herself in her art and requests that they respect her privacy. But the mystery around her only intensifies media demands for her to appear. And since Taransky is the only person known to have had one-on-one -on -one contact with Simone, the paparazzi stalk him relentlessly, even showing up on his beachfront property when he is trying to spend time with his daughter and refuse to leave him alone and badger him with endless questions about Simone's whereabouts. Two particularly ambitious tabloid reporters even go as far as bugging his cell phone so that they can listen in on his calls with Simone. In one scene where Taransky pretends to be on the phone with Simone, the reporters listen in on the call but can only hear his voice but not Simone's. Instead of realizing that Taransky is having a pretend phone call, they assume he has taken extra steps to hide Simone and is using advanced tech to secure her calls. Taransky decides to reveal the secret of Simone's non-existence after he does a second movie with her. His ex-wife Elaine, who fired him from her film studio and then rehired him, is also curious about Simone and tells Taransky that she doesn't trust her. She is worried that Simone now controls Taransky's future, but Taransky assures her that Simone doesn't control him, he controls her. For his second movie with Simone, Taransky tells the other cast members that they will not be meeting Simone in person during filming and that body doubles will be used for the love scenes. He arranges for Simone to have a conference call with the cast so that they can get to know each other and then slips away during the call so that he can control Simone's responses in real time. Taransky's second movie with Simone is also a hit and the public becomes hungrier than ever for her. To satisfy demands, Taransky uses misdirection and cinematic special effects to make it look like Simone was out in public. He even gives a shadow puppet show in a hotel room near the window to make the press believe that they are seeing a silhouette of Simone. Later, he checks Simone out of the hotel and uses his secretary as a body double to mislead the press into thinking that they saw her in person and also photoshops her into photos at parties. Taransky really goes the extra length to perpetuate the lie that is Simone's existence. He even leaves traces of blonde hair and perfume in her hotel room to make it look like she slept there. However, despite all this, the two relentless tabloid reporters who bugged Taransky's phone bribe a hotel staff member to let them into the room Simone stayed in, but they get suspicious when they dust for fingerprints. They are able to find Taransky's prints all over the room, but none of Simone's. When Simone's second movie is also a success due to her stellar acting, 
Taransky's ex-wife, Elaine, and the studio also become determined to meet her and convince her to make in-person appearances. They even enter Taransky's set by force, hoping to meet Simone, but they find it empty. Taransky makes up some story about her being agoraphobic and they believe him. His ex-wife even praises Taransky for his dedication to protecting Simone. Hoping to lure Simone out, the two tabloid guys from earlier write a fake biography of her childhood, hoping she will come out and refute it, but their ploy fails. Taransky reaches a compromise with the film studio and says that Simone will do interviews with the press, but only via video call. However, Taransky uses out-of-date stock photography during Simone's interview instead of being on site as claimed, and the tabloid guys find that out. In the weeks that follow, Taransky agrees for Simone to appear on the covers of several magazines, but only if the photo shoot is done by Simone's private team. As her popularity soars ever higher, Simone starts getting romantically linked with Taransky, and Taransky's ex-wife starts to become super jealous of the pair. She is even more annoyed when her hot younger man shows his admiration for Simone. Simone becomes even more famous when she releases a new perfume and a music album. Taransky even names his boat after her. And speaking of boats, one day when Taransky is at the dock getting off it, he is ambushed by the two tabloid guys who not only confront him about the fake background in Simone's interview, but about how they have looked into his finances and it looks like Taransky hasn't paid Simone a single cent of her money. Taransky tells them he has power of attorney and that he is keeping Simone's money in a trust. But the tabloid guys also say that Simone has no paper trail, which is strange, and they also tell Taransky that all their research seems to indicate that Simone never left the studio and wonder if he is not only stealing her money, but holding her hostage as well. Exasperated, Taransky promises that Simone will make a live appearance. Taransky arranges for Simone to perform a song at a stadium event, appearing in a cloud of smoke and then using holographic technology. He makes sure security around Simone's dressing room and stage is tight, claiming that she has received death threats, so nobody is allowed to approach her. Taransky's plan succeeds and the perception of being in person is reinforced at the concert with real-time visualization on the stadium's monitors. Simone becomes even more famous, simultaneously becoming a double winner for the Academy Award for Best Actress, tying with herself in the process. As all this happens, Elaine becomes convinced that Taransky is having an affair with Simone, and she disapproves. Her inability to talk about anything else other than Taransky and Simone eventually leads to her breaking up with her hot guy. Taransky starts to grow tired of Simone constantly overshadowing him in the press and not receiving enough recognition, so he decides to ruin her career. On his first attempt at ruining Simone, he has her do a directorial debut in a movie called I Am Pig, which portrays a tasteless treatment of zoophilia intended to disgust audiences. But his attempts fail to achieve the desired effect of audience alienation. It does the opposite and fosters her credibility as a risk-taking, fearless, and avant-garde artist. Taransky then attempts to ruin Simone by having her drink, smoke, curse at public appearances, and use politically incorrect statements. This similarly backfires when the press instead begins to see her as refreshingly honest. Frustrated beyond measure, Taransky decides to delete Simone. As a last resort, he disposes of Simone by using a computer virus to erase her and then dumping her hard drive and floppy disks into a steamer trunk, takes it on his boat and dumps it at sea. Afterwards, he announces to the press that she has died of a rare virus contracted on her goodwill tour of the third world. The two tabloid guys are shocked and emotional at the announcement of her death. One of them faints and the other cries while asking if she was suffering in her final moments. At her funeral, the police show up and open her coffin and find only a cardboard cutout of her. Taransky is arrested and the police gather testimony from several people that portrays Taransky as a man who was extremely controlling and obsessed with Simone. But the most damning evidence against him is a security camera video where he loads a large trunk onto his yacht that is assumed to contain Simone's dead body. 
After being charged with her murder, Taransky attempts to explain that Simone is not a real person but a computer program. However, the police don't believe him. When they retrieve the chest containing the computer data from the sea, it is brought up empty and Taransky is unable to prove his claims. They say the truth will set you free, but for Taransky this proves to be untrue. Taransky's daughter Lainey believes his story, but his ex-wife Elaine has strong doubts. As the two are in his studio, Lainey goes through his computer and accidentally finds Taransky's forgotten virus source disk. She applies an antivirus program to it and restores Simone. Elaine and Lainey have Simone appear on national television laughing whilst holding up a newspaper headline with her obituary. This is enough to clear the murder charges against Taransky and he is set free. Elaine and Lainey pick up a confused Taransky and Elaine asks to get back together with him. Realizing that Simone is too big to ruin or kill off, Taransky, Elaine and Lainey continue to perpetuate the lie of her existence. In the end, Simone and Taransky are remotely interviewed at home about their new baby, who is also a virtual construct like Simone, and uses that alleged pregnancy as a cover story for her absence. Simone expresses concerns about her baby's future and announces that she will be entering politics. And that in a nutshell is what happens in the movie Simone. Let me just say, this movie is no masterpiece, but it is not one I would turn my nose up at either. It's just so and so, which is why I am giving it a watchability rating of 5 out of 10. It was neither awesome nor horrible. In a few years, I will probably watch it again and enjoy it just as much as I did today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. Hit the subscribe button below and check out some of my other content.